It's Patio Side Chats with Fernando Martinez from Chaparral Pavers with tips and advice on landscaping and gardening. Here's Fernando Martinez. Yes, it is. Hello, hello, and welcome to uh, another edition here of your Patio Side Chats, your Central Coast landscape show where you can get all your advice and tips on gardening and landscaping. So let's dive right on into it. Today, I want to talk about plants and some plant names. We don't get a lot into names of plants and certain types of plants, but I think we, I really kind of want to do that a little more now that the show has kind of grown into it's kind of come to age now where we can, you know, talk, go a little more into depth. So if you've been listening and learning and following along, you know, we can go a little deeper on the plants and plant names. I also want to talk about focal points. So I really want to go into some more ideas about design today. Um, focal points are key and huge in any design, any project that you're taking on. And it kind of goes across the board in all different trades, but especially in landscaping. Um, so when you walk around and we're looking from windows or inside views, outside views, upstairs, what's going to invite you out into the landscape and into that space that you want to use and enjoy. Also, I want to talk about drains, um, the dreaded drain talk, but (laughs) everything that I do as a contractor and pretty much all the beautiful stuff of the pavers and walls and plantings and water features and fire pits and all this stuff is basically meaningless and worthless without drainage. So it's absolutely huge. It has to be drained, right? So I want to talk a little bit about when you're hiring a contractor, are they mentioning that? Are they thinking about drainage um, when it comes to that outside? Because when it comes to value, that's absolutely a big part of it. They If they finish this whole job they're doing for you and they haven't thought about the drainage, it could be a disaster. So let's jump right into it now and talk about these plants here. So earlier this morning, I was walking through my house and I was thinking about how the plantings look from the inside of the house. And what I've done on a couple of windows that we have, that's big windows that we have across the front of our house and they're kind of low, was to plant some tall plants in front of those windows. And now they've been there for several years and they're growing up tall in front of the windows. Now, normally you wouldn't think of planting, you know, tall plant material in front of a window from the outside of the house. It's let's say if you walk across the street and look at the front of your home, the tendency is to keep things low, especially in front of windows. But you could make a case and I have done so at my house and I absolutely love seeing these tall plants in front of low windows. And and I'm talking plants that aren't dense or hedge-like or full so that they're, you know, defeating all the sunlight. In fact, what I've done is planted um, deciduous shrubs. So in front of two windows across my house, we have uh, lilacs, which are absolutely gorgeous. And they're blooming right now, which is really cool. They lose all their leaves in the fall and they are very uh, picturesque. They have kind of white, whitish bark on their on the trunks and the stems coming up and they really look neat uh, through the house because you can see through them but they give you kind of a sense of not privacy necessarily but like a screening and it's just nice and then the springtime they they come out with the flowers with no leaves which is really neat and they're fragrant open the window you can smell them in the house and then during the the spring summer and fall they get these beautiful heart heart shaped uh, green leaves and they're gorgeous Also next to those, I have lemon verbena. Oh my gosh, so wonderful. The best fragrance in the world. Absolutely love it. Little tiny white flowers that bloom. It's thin, airy, and of course you can help that with the pruning. And it's just got the nice, beautiful branch structure. Goes deciduous in the winter. Loses its leaves along with the lilac. So the front bed across, I also have a Japanese maple in there that you can't see from the inside of the house, but it's in between the windows. So that's really tall and a little fuller up top, but it's just all, it really gives me a sense of seasons. Here we are in the central coast and it seems like it's summer year round, but the deciduous shrubs make it really known what time of year it is. So it's, it's really cool. I love it. Um, Manzanita would be another one uh, plant that would do really well in front of a window can easily be thinned out. They can get dense if you don't prune them but they are very picturesque and they get that beautiful red skin like trunk and 
you know, you get out there and thin them out and give them a neat shape, they can look absolutely spectacular from inside the house in front of a window. And of course, put a little light on there at night. And it's just, I love looking at our garden from inside the house over by our tub. I, we have, um, Pittosporum nigricans, again, another plant. It's very thin, airy, tons of varieties. They have silver sheen, um, Marjorie Shannon. They have just tons. Every time I go into the nursery, I see more varieties of that really airy Pittosporum nigricans. Um, So that's the type and style of plants that would do well and look good from inside the house and from outside. And it's just uh, Polygala grandiflora I have across, and it's kind of dense, but it's full and tall, and it's across from a sidewalk, and so it gives a little more room. But again, inside the house, it's cutting out some views. I don't see the street down the way. I don't see my neighbor's motorhome or, you know, whatever it is. You can kind of soften that view from inside the house. So definitely think about that when you're planting in the gardens and also when you're planting in pots. So uh, to talk about some plants for pots and what does well in containers, um, in my backyard for shaded areas, we don't have a lot of shade at my house, but we do have one area there where we want something, you come in the gate, it's all covered and dark, you know, kind of really all day, but we have an um, asparagus fern there. There's two types, uh, asparagus springeri and asparagus myeri. In fact, actually, I think there's three. But any of them do fantastic in pots. I would not plant those in the ground. They get those bulbous-like roots, and they can spread, and they can kind of be invasive and hard to get rid of, but great in containers because they're tough as nails. They can do just fine in the shade and very little water. If I remember to empty the dog's water bowl into them once every two weeks, they're lucky, and they're doing totally fine growing the dogs up against them, break the branches, you cut them off, they just grow more really uh, carefree plants and they look beautiful in pots, stunning in fact. So I love them. I want to talk about them today. Um, I have an impatient ovarii. They call that a poor man's rhododendron. I wish we could grow rhododendrons here on the central coast. You got to go up to Oregon or Washington uh, if you've ever been up north and seen the, the massive, incredible rhododendrons. Um, we have azaleas that we can grow here. They'll also do well in a pot. I've seen azaleas uh, in hanging pots. Not a huge fan of things hanging down, especially near doorways or gates or anything. So for my house, it wouldn't work. Um, it just seems cluttered. You know, you really have to have like a large patio cover with some space and then maybe you're trying to block out a certain view or something. Um, then hanging pots could work. But I have seen some gorgeous azaleas and hanging pots in it, and it can be stunning. Um, what else? Succulents, of course. I mean, we talk about all the time, succulents seem to be the most obvious choice for pots. Um, but match the pot with the plant. When you're doing design with containers, think about the color of the pot, the shape of the pot, the size of the container, and plant accordingly. So in other words, uh, I have a, um, a succulent called Dudleya. It's a small native succulent, and it's really white. It's, it's got this bluish, fleshy leaves, and it has this white dust that gets on there. It's gorgeous. And it, they come out maybe about 10, 11 inches. It looks like a big, giant flower. And it's low. So I have this low, squatty pot that was an Italian clay pot that has a kind of a whitish... Uh, powdery finish to the pot itself because when you look at clay pots usually you have that that orange you know kind of some can be glossy or dark orange and other ones can be this kind of a, a mild like salmon with a white uh, powdery finish to them and it just totally matched that white powdery finish of the Dudleya so I planted that in that low pot, and I have that over by a hose bib, and the pot and the plant look really good together. If you use the, you know, maybe the Mexican clay pots or the really orange Italian pottery, go for like a dark green foliage. There's plenty of succulents that have a dark green. Some of them even flower with orange, and you can kind of tie in the pot color, and it looks really neat. Um, grasses do really well in pots. So if you have a cobalt blue 
plant you could use, like a bluish gray uh, grass. Um, you know, I've seen beautiful copper tones and greens in pots. Pull a color out of the pot, either tie it in with the flower or the leaves. There's different color grass looking uh, plants called flax. I think everybody knows about flax. They have tons and tons of varieties of those. They do really well in pots. Very carefree. Don't require a lot of water. Clivia looks great in pots and does really well. They have this beautiful big green leaves and this giant cluster of big orange flowers. Kind of an old fashioned plant now. I guess I've seen it since I was a kid working in nurseries. It's been around a long time and they're tough as nails. They almost look like a giant amaryllis, like an orange amaryllis, if you can imagine that. They are in the amaryllis family. So uh, there's just so much fun you can have with pots. Now placing them, when it comes to placing them, you want to look, again, back to focal points and angles who walk around the house, on the inside of the house, look out of the windows, anywhere you would sit normally or spend a lot of time, the kitchen, um, you know, a lounge chair in front of a TV, and look out the windows and see what your views are and treat them like pictures. Think of it as, as photography. Think of your window as, as a frame. Then what would you frame outside of that window if you were taking a picture of it? And does it look like a picture outside of that window? Because you certainly can make it that. And it, it sometimes is something very simple as, as putting a pot out or putting a water feature or moving a water feature over three feet from where you were thinking it looked good from outside, where it still looks good outside, and it looks great from inside. Why not? Check from upstairs. Uh, look around out all the different rooms of the house. What is everyone's view? You know, go outside, uh, go across the street, try coming in the gate, and what do you see, and how does it look? And really, when it comes to focal points, it's you have to ask yourself, focal point from where? You know, from where am I looking at it? at it from, how does it look from different angles and all the focal points change. It's like a moving target. And what you're trying to do, the, the goal is to get it to really look as good as it can from all the angles. I do it for every item that we install. I'm passionate about it. I'm always thinking, okay, where is the customer going to be walking out of the back door? Where are they going to be getting out of their vehicle from? How does it look as you walk up the entry and as you're looking over to the left or right and how does it feel? I mean, really, at the end of the day, you want it to feel really good and nice and welcoming. And I mean, even down to when we plant a tree, I'm turning the tree and I'll go stand at the front door. Not turn a little more. Let me see the face of that tree. There's always a front side to a plant when you're planting it. There's a viewing angle for a water feature that looks better than another angle. There's, you know, the placement of the fire pit is really crucial. How are the chairs going to fit? How is it going to have enough space to sit around? Can you see it from the master bedroom? Can you see it from the dining room? You know, it's just, I don't know. All those things, they make such a difference, and they're huge when it comes to design. And I really want you to think about it when you're taking on a project, and or even if you're hiring a contractor to do the project for you, I you still should walk around with them, especially, or, you know, hopefully they're doing it, but they may not be. And so, you know, it's important when you, especially when you're hiring somebody, you expect them to be professional and to know these things and to go help you through the design process. I love including our clients in that process. If, if we're going to put a paver walkway from one area to another, start with paint, walk it back and forth and see how does it feel? How does it look? If I came in the gate, does it look curvy enough or is it too curvy? If I'm looking from my main patio walking out, does it draw me to that? And really pay attention to those things before they go in. Because when it comes down to at the end of the day, especially if you're paying for the project to have it done, either way, you're going to be paying for the materials. You really want to get the best experience and the best value for that. So, you know, it's, I, I'm passionate about it because I've, feel bad when someone hires somebody and they pay them good money and they don't think the design through or they don't think about the focal points or the viewing angles or how a job's going to feel. You could spend a lot of money and end up with something that's choppy, not cohesive, doesn't really come together and, and feel like part of the home, and it should. And so really that's value. If you can get really good products 
put in in a very thoughtful way, done right the first time mentality. That's how you get value. That's how you should be thinking about when you think about the price of the project, not just, you know, how cheap can I get the materials for? How low can I get the labor, you know, bid in for? I, I know a guy that can do this for me or a buddy of a buddy. He's going to come in. Are they really going to think about all the focal points? Are they going to bring this whole project together? A lot of times what guys do, especially with specific trades, is they're only thinking about exactly what they're doing. So if a guy comes in there, he's pouring concrete, he's thinking, yeah, concrete, concrete, you know, yeah, they don't even, I'm always fighting the concrete guys to leave planners for me, you know, leave some space here so I can break it up, put a sleeve in so I can run irrigation later. Or I might want to do lighting there. And so landscapers, or at least we should, I know I do, is think about the whole, how is the whole project going to look? Not just the concrete or the fencing guys just doing the fence or, you know, Painting guys come in there and they're laying the paint stuff all over the plants and stepping on them and just, oh, the, my paint looks good. But it's, we have, someone's got to be in charge of bringing this all together, bringing these, the colors and the design and the feel. And I take it huge. I take it upon myself to really do that. And I think it does bring value because if I'm not the cheapest guy on the bid, maybe there's a reason. Maybe because we're taking the time to do it right the first time to get the good products, to do it in a way that's going to work and last and feel good. The focal points are going to be thought about. The flow of how you walk through the yard is going to be thought about. Sound is thought. Do we need a water feature to mask the sound of traffic? Do we need, you know, speakers out here to get some music? And, you know, things subtly, little lights coming on at night. Uh, do we need to hide some views with decorative panels? All these things are these design ideas and they bring an immense amount of value. So the price of that project, if it includes everything we're talking about in the show and it costs more than a project that doesn't include those things or aren't really as well thought through, are they worth the same? How much are design ideas and a person of creativity, the, is that worth? I mean, how much value does that bring to the job? I guess you have to decide for yourself if that's something that if they're the right person that you want to work with, if you think these, this vision is going to be brought to life and your job is going to be better for it, then it's absolutely worth it. It brings a lot of value. So again, thinking of focal points, incorporating all the design ideas into a project that's going to work and be worth a lot and hold its value in the long run. So drainage, like we started talking about earlier, is huge in that. So the focal points, the drainage, how to incorporate the ideas with a low maintenance, drought tolerant plants. And it's what everybody wants these days. That's what I want in my yard. I mean, it's very rare I get asked for, you know, lush, big, you know, high maintenance gardens. No way. We don't really want to have time for that. I'd rather spend time doing other things. So doing it right the first time is not just a saying it's something that we really need to accomplish it's it's the goal really because if you can do it in a way that's going to work and last you're going to be so much happier your peace of mind when the project's over you're not going to be under construction any longer you're not having to do it again later and so that to me is golden so one example of that we're working on a retaining wall right now and we've been we found out that there was a leak and we were digging out for the footing and all this water's just coming down, coming down, draining down, draining down. And the soil was just completely soupy and there's no way it would compact. So I am not going to just hurry up, get it in there, even though it's going to cost me more money, take us more time. The pallets are sitting on the street. The rock is there. I want to get this wall finished. It's not, going to be done right the first time if I put it on top of this wet sloppy soil. We found out there was a leak up in the backyard. So we fixed it and we dug this hole and we're taking the buckets and trying to get the water out of there, but we've really got to let it dry out, put extra rock in there. We went back uh, this last week and still wasn't ready. But again, it's just, you can't move forward if you're going to do it in a way that's hurried or not right because in the long run it's going to be much worse for that client if that wall were to fail and sink and look terrible right in the front of their house 
I don't want that for them, and it would be a nightmare for us if we had to go back later, tear that wall apart, and then fix it. Okay, so stay tuned, and we'll be right back on the other side of the break. You're listening to Patio Side Chat with Fernando Martinez from Chaparral Pavers on California's Central Coast. Here on 1240 AM and 99.5 FM, KSMA. This show is brought to you by Airval Block. Concrete paving stones or pavers are not all created equal. Airval block pavers are created from a dry mix of gravel, sand, cement, and color. With very little water used, they're super strong. They won't crack or fade. And to be an Airval block paver, the gravel and sand come from right here on the Central Coast, supporting our local community. Airval block is the only local manufacturer of concrete masonry products like pavers, mortarless retaining wall blocks. Airval Block products are high quality for peace of mind, and there are many colors to choose from. And if you're not sure which products you need or how to use them, you will always get expert advice from the staff at Airval Block, products made on the Central Coast for the Central Coast. Visit their fully landscaped outdoor showroom to see the many ways you can use Airval Block products at number one Suburban Road in San Luis Obispo. Or go online at airvolblock.com. If you're thinking about installing a new paver patio or paver driveway, check out Chaparral Pavers online at ilovetocomehome.com. Serving the Central Coast since 2001, Chaparral Pavers will work with you to get it right and complete the job to your specifications, as customer service is king at Chaparral Pavers. Paver driveways are stylish and durable and guaranteed to never crack. If your old concrete driveway or entryway is a hazardous cracking mess, it's time to call Chaparral Pavers. Go to their website, ilovetocomehome.com. You'll find all the information you need. Check out photographs of past installations and reviews from Central Coast residents who have used Chaparral Pavers. And don't forget, all installations are guaranteed for the life of your home. So check out Chaparral Pavers online at ilovetocomehome.com. Chaparral Pavers, they'll make you love to come home. Now, back to Patio Side Chats with Fernando Martinez from Chaparral Pavers on KSMA. And we are back. Okay, we are talking about doing it right the first time, no matter what your project is, to really think that project all the way through to get the best results and the best value, regardless of what the price is, is to really uh, think about the drainage as well when it comes to landscaping projects. The drainage, grading and drainage is number one. That's first and foremost, no matter what else you put on top, all the pretty beautiful stuff, it's worth nothing if it doesn't work in terms of grading and drainage. You know, I, one thing I wanted to mention, there are decorative grain drain grates and they can actually, even though, because drains aren't necessarily the most beautiful things in the world, but they do make some decorative drain grates and think about those when you're putting in the drainage. Also, um, all your rain gutters and your downspouts get all be tied into the drain and use the white pipe with the right fittings, a square to the round, and they're paintable. You can paint them to make them look nice. So everything can look nice, work, and you don't have to overgrade. Sometimes I see patterns are too steep, so make sure you get just enough for the water to roll off, but no more than that. Again, so we're keeping this design in mind, but it has to absolutely be graded and drain correctly. So we're also talking about some plants and plant names, maybe the idea of putting tall plants in front of low windows so that things look neat from inside and kind of draws that garden into the home and makes you feel. I have a couple big windows in our, where we sit down and eat. Um, and sometimes in the morning if we're eating breakfast, it's nice, beautiful, warm morning. Open both the windows. The lilacs are out there, the lemon verbena bushes, the hummingbirds are going by. And it just feels nice. I feel like I'm maybe eating outside, even though I'm inside with screens and no bugs, which is kind of nice. So really uh, think about the focal points. We've also been talking about that. And not only from one angle, focal point from where? Think about it. And it's multiple places. And it's extremely important to walk around before you plant the tree in the ground, before you place the water feature, before you run the gas line, 
to the fire pit, think really about where that fire pit's going to look the best from, not only from outside, but inside, from the back door, from the windows, from where you're sitting down, from where you're doing the dishes, to upstairs and looking out the windows or across the street or walking through a gate. All those things matter. So walk around and even if it's garden art, um, you know, decorative panels or setting a certain a spotlight on a certain area, there's so many different ways to think about what focal points mean and what they mean to design and how they can completely change the look depending on how you position those things. So very, very important. Also, when you're hiring a contractor, make sure that they're thinking about all these things, that they're communicating these things to you, that you're involved in the process. Because I believe that really brings a lot of value to the project, even if they're a little more expensive than another contractor who's not bringing those things to it or not thinking about it or just wanting to get in and out. And, you know, maybe there's a market for that. You just want it to be the lowest price. You you know, maybe it's the side of a home or some project that's not as crucial. But when it comes to the main areas, I think spending a little more time planning, thinking about it, working with the right person who you think is going to be able to bring a creative aspect to it, have good design ideas, thinking about all the focal points, thinking about how everything's going to drain, how everything's going to work together, running sleeves and things ahead of time for future use. Could there possibly be you know, an outdoor kitchen here in the future. Do we run a gas line over there now? Do we run electrical? Is there going to be, do you need any more external plugs in the yard? Would you like more hose bibs throughout the yard? You know, all these things before you put in the patio or before the concrete guy just comes in, just does his concrete. It's not really thinking about anything else. So there's a lot of value there. Okay. We are just about out of time for today. I want to thank you for tuning in and listening to this gardening radio show, your gardening radio show right here on the Central Coast. I am Fernando Martinez of Chaparral Pavers. Uh, I want to thank my son, Gibson, for coming into the studio today and hanging out with me and putting up with Ding Dong Datto. You can always check us out on Facebook and give us ideas for the next show, or the topic you'd like to hear about. Just go to Facebook and type in Chaparral Pavers. And, of course, you can always find us on the web at... I love to come home.com. So thanks again, and we will see you next week. This has been Patio Side Chats with Fernando Martinez from Chaparral Pavers. Go to I love to come home.com to find out more or call 805 588 6917. And be sure and tune in next week at this same time for Patio Side Chat here on ASMA.